The state of Minnesota passed several tenant protections following the end of the COVID-19 eviction moratoriums. And one of those rules said that landlords would no longer be able to see eviction filings on tenants' records. But now the Minnesota State Supreme Court says that that rule is unconstitutional. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of the state of Minnesota. So Minnesota, like many of the far left-leaning states, they passed a bunch of tenant protections following the end of the eviction moratoriums because they said, oh, we don't want people to become unhoused. We, we have to pass a whole bunch of new laws, new rules, and new regulations that basically would extend these eviction moratoriums going on into the future. And, uh, you know, it, it's crazy. But one of these laws that they passed said that, hey, landlords, you know, they're, they're looking at these eviction records and it's not right because they're rejecting people based on the fact that an eviction was filed and yet there was no judgment made in the actual you know, case. And that's not right. So we want to ban landlords from being able to do that. So they created a law that would make it so that nobody could see eviction filings. Well, the Minnesota Supreme Court said, hey, that law is not constitutional due to the public records law, okay? Which says that basically these are public records and so therefore people should be able to see them. And I agree, I agree. People should be able to see public records. This isn't something that you know, the, the state government can choose just to pick and choose which records can be seen and which ones can't. It's a, it was a complete joke. And fortunately, they struck this nonsense down. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. So landlords out there, do you look at evictions that have been filed and uh, take that into consideration when you're doing your tenant screening? I know I do. I, you, I do that because a lot of evictions, they never reach the point of a judgment because some tenants will move out. Some landlords will allow their tenants to leave even if they still owe them money. Even if they violated the terms of the lease, they will allow them to leave because it costs us a lot of money to go through the entire eviction process. And it is much easier, even if we file the eviction, it is much easier if we can get that tenant out of there beforehand, before a decision is made. You know, the, the longer we have to sit around with that tenant sitting in our unit not paying rent, then the more money we lose. And if we have to keep going back to court due to, you know, uh, paying lawyers and uh, having to, you know, just, just sit there, then yeah, we're going to lose more money. And so a lot of eviction decisions are never finalized. And, you know, there's never a judgment made on cases because it is handled outside of court and yet that is very important information for the next landlord it would be very nice for me to know that hey this tenant who just applied to rent my property well they actually have an eviction filing on their record from their previous landlord because they did not pay their previous landlord the rent i mean don't you think that would be useful information for a current landlord to know immediately that, hey, we got a person over here who doesn't pay the rent or doesn't pay the rent on time or causes problems for their previous landlord. So this might not be the best tenant. But no, they want to take our ability to you know look at evictions. They want to take our ability to properly screen tenants away from us. And what is the, what's the result going to be? It's not going to be more people are con going to continue to be housed, right? That, I mean, they act like, oh, well, if we're able to do this, then this will prevent homelessness. No, it won't. Okay. The only thing it means is that, you know, the next landlord is going to lose thousands of dollars and evict this tenant as well if they don't pay. Right. And, you know, have more trouble. And because of the additional trouble and the additional costs, et cetera, right, we have to increase our screening criteria. We have to increase how much we're charging for rent and, it makes it even harder for people to find affordable housing. So yeah, the rules they put into place actually are hurting the tenants. But fortunately, at least in the state of Minnesota for now, they're saying that, hey, you know, no, you can't do this. You can't do this. Landlords and, and the public in, in general, 
they have a right to look at these because these are public records, okay? So anyway, uh, let's get into this article and see what it says. This article is coming from KSTP.com and it says, Minnesota Supreme Court order takes aim at new eviction filing law. All right, let's get into it. The pandemic era eviction moratorium expired last summer, sorry, and eviction filing spiked. The Minnesota legislator passed a package of renter protections during the session that followed. One of the new laws prevented an eviction filing from being accessed by those who aren't involved in the case until the court entered a final judgment. When an eviction is filed, it just means a relationship has broken down and it's an allegation, said Representative Esther Agbaje. <laughs> Pardon my, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, DFL from Minneapolis. As soon as someone files, regardless of whether it's a frivolous lawsuit or not, that now harms the tenant. So right there, she throws in the assumption, oh, it's a frivolous lawsuit. Yeah, because landlords just love just filing evictions for frivolous reasons. No, no, that's complete garbage right there, okay? I'd say 99% of all eviction filings are for good reason. You know, there's that one tiny percent, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the grand majority of landlords out here who are doing the right thing and just want to be paid the money that they are owed. Because more than 90%, probably more like 95% of all the evictions are filed for non-payment of rent. So, you know, th this is an absolute joke. And of course, we have uh, a ridiculous politician who is even implying that it's, you know, oh, well, it is most likely frivolous. No. She raised concerns the public record could prevent tenants from finding new housing and could have other future implications. What we wanted to do is make sure that when it's still in the allegation stage, that is a record that doesn't continue to follow them, Representative Agbaje said. On Tuesday, the Minnesota Supreme Court issued an order that eviction records are public. Chief Justice Lori Gildea wrote access to records is governed by rules adopted by the Supreme Court and the changes the law makes are contrary to the rules of public access. Yep, and she's absolutely correct. And yes, we should be able to access these records and them trying to hide them. Yes, it is going to make those people harder, you know, make it harder for those people to be able to find housing. And rightfully so. That's part of the reason that we encourage people to do the right thing and abide by the contract that you sign. That's like saying, oh, well, it's not right that, you know, after I missed a house payment, then the bank wouldn't want to give me a loan. Of course, they don't want to lend you money. You've already proven that you're missing house payments and that, you know, you're not going to pay them. So why would you think that the bank would want to lend you money going on into the future? And if they do decide to lend you money, it's going to cost you a much higher percentage rate. You know, you might have to pay a lot. You know, you might have to go jump through a lot more hoops. And so what, what I'm really saying is that housing providers can be looked at a way as similar to lenders. OK, in that if you don't pay us right on time or you don't pay us the money that you owe us, then we are much less likely to provide housing to you, just like a bank is much less likely to offer money to you to lend if you miss a, a loan payment, okay? <laughs> so yeah, don't, don't, ex don't try to change that because the action, the, the fault of this is due to the tenant themselves. And the only thing you're doing is encouraging bad behavior by blocking out these eviction records okay you're telling people oh well you know you're not going to be punished for this bad behavior so you might as well miss those payments because the landlords will still rent to you anyway no no that's complete garbage and nonsense i think for us it was a little bit of a surprise agbaje said we're continuing to look at our op options and look at what this actually means for the legislature so hopefully we'll have more power to share later attorney doug turner welcomes the decision He's a partner at Hanbury and Turner, a law firm that represents more than 100 landlords and property managers. I think that a lot of our clients are going to be happy, Turner said. Every court record should be available for everyone to see. He explained there were concerns about the time it would take to access records if the law had gone into effect. 
from case filing to final disposition of the eviction action could take up to 90 days, said Turner. According to Turner, the records can contain relevant information for his clients. They see it as important, Turner said, to be able to see that record and judge somebody's housing worthiness in the future is important. And that is one of the things that a lot of landlords and folks in the industry look to as to whether there will be success for that person down the road. And they are absolutely correct, okay? That is why we need access to these records. And trying to block those things, trying to prevent basically bad tenants from you know their records being seen by landlords, that's not helping anything. The only thing it's helping is bad actors, you know, people who are not doing the things they're supposed to be doing, not paying their rent on time, not handling their debts, and you know, and giving them a benefit as though they are some kind of innocent victim when they're not. 